advantage of it. It was a great pitching matchup last night. It starts with Morrison. He gets this base hit. And then watch the throw by Upton all the way to the backstop. The Mariners score their first run. That ties up the game. But the other runners get to move up second and third. Now a great situation for the Mariners. Chris Taylor, the batter, pop up. Looks like the inning's over for well, sure, right? Well, this was when the game was over. As soon as Lestella, the second baseman, tries to one hand, it goes off the heel of his glove with two outs. Both, both runs will score. The Mariners will tack on another run with this base hit from Jackson to drive in a run here as Taylor will come around and score. So, yes, the Mariners take advantage of a couple of errors in the fourth inning with the way that Felix was going. You knew that was probably going to stand up. Absolutely. Some news and notes. Felix, 15th consecutive ultra quality start. I heard Don Sutton say, we may not have seen the best of him yet. <laughs> well, that's it. Everybody keeps asking me about that with Felix, but who knows? You can't put a ceiling on what the guy has done. Already won a Cy Young Award. Well on his way to his second. He has been something special this year. Starters today, it's a good matchup. Julio Tehran coming off a 2-1 complete game loss a duel that he lost at L.A. against Clayton Kershaw. And Chris Young trying to get double-figure wins for the third time in his career. Now looking for his 10th win here at Safeco Field. The good news for Chris, he's pitched extremely well. Here at Safeco Field, he's pitched well in the daytime. So a little bit of run support with help of him in his daytime ERA and pitching at Safeco Field. 2.2 ERA for Chris Young. He has really pitched well for the Mariners. Those are some great numbers in Tehran. Bright young pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. He brings a lot to the table here. Pretty good two-seam fastball. It'll be 91-92 at times. You'll see a four-seamer. That'll be around 94, maybe 95. His best pitch, his curveball. Second best curveball in the National League to Adam Wainwright. He will also mix in a slider and a changeup. And watch out, base runners. He has one of the best moves for a right-hander when the Mariners are trying to steal. Well, we got a great situation here as the Mariners try to complete a season sweep of the Atlanta Braves. And last night, Chris Taylor turned in this gym. It was the play of the night in most circles around baseball and in the sports world. Well, Felix dug it big time, as did we. Glad you're with us. Afternoon baseball, beautiful day in Seattle. Braves, Mariners, first pitch is straight ahead.
Seattle Mariners Baseball on Road Sports is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, presenting the Master of Laughter Sinbad August 16th. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. And by Ford, we are local. Fantastic day for a ball game or to stroll by the lake. Hi, everyone. Angie Mentink here at the Ford Sports Desk. And the Mariners have several things going for them here into the finale. No one's got a lower ERA in interleague play than the Mariners do. And also, they have got Chris Young on the mound, and he has the American League's best home opponent batting average against. All right. So the Mariners can do what they can do now. As for whether or not they'll be able to make up any ground in the wild card race, they'll have to wait and see. Detroit versus the Yankees. It's Verlander versus Chris Capuano in that one. Baltimore and Toronto also set to go just after 4 o'clock. Wei Yin Chen versus Drew Hutchinson in Kansas City and Arizona. Another interleague matchup. Jordana Ventura versus Josh Coleman Turr. Now, Chris Sale is going for the Chicago White Sox today. He's 10 and 1 with an ERA just over 2. So, if you're doing the math, the White Sox are coming into town next. That means that the Mariners will miss him. Rats. All right, 30,000 expected for today's game here at Safeco Field. Remember, your boss may have his television on. So, don't say you're not coming here because you may be seen. Today is going to be fantastic, but also last night was pretty good, too.
Wednesday in Seattle. Begin with clouds and a gloomy look. But wait, as we come up on first pitch action here at Safe Cofield, gorgeous blue sky, sunshine as we get ready for the Mariners and the Atlanta Braves. And the Mariners looking to complete the sweet season sweep of these Braves, having won two in Atlanta and winning last night. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers with you. And the Root Sports crew, as we take a look at Chris Young warming up, let's take a look at a batting order that he'll face from Freddie Gonzalez's Atlanta Braves. Leading off the speedy Emilio Bonifacio, then it's Lestella Freeman, Justin Upton, the DH today. He will hit clean up his career against Young. It's a good one, 417 average, 5 for 12 with the double. Then it's Hayward Johnson, Gaddis, Gaddis with 17 home runs on the year. He will hit seventh. Brother of Justin Upton, B.J. Upton hitting eighth. Hayden, you're rounding out the nine for the Braves. Chris Young on the air, 319 ERA, 79 strikeouts to 43 walks. Opponents hitting just 218. The key for him, keep the ball in the ballpark. He's given him 19 home runs this year. We are ready for action. Chris Young sitting on nine wins. Last time he had 10 wins was back in 06 with San Diego. Trying to win in double figures for the third time in his career with Texas in 05. He went 12 and 7 and San Diego the next year 11 and 5. Elio Bonifacio, one for four last night, played in center field, did a nice job. He's in left field tonight. Here's your first pitch. And it's in there for called strike one. Beautiful day here in Seattle. Umpires in today's ball game, Lance Barrett has home plate. Brian Gorman at first, Ed Hickox at, at second, and Pat Holberg at third. 67 degrees. Wind out of the north at two. Because of the speed of Bonifacio, Kyle Seeger, the third baseman, having to play in on the grass. The base hit that Bonifacio picked up in last night's game was a base hit by Kyle to his left. And it looked as if he was trying to hit it that way again, but you have to respect his speed. But with two strikes, Kyle will be able to back up now. Seventh team for Bonifacio coming over from the Cubs on July 31st. Here's a 2 2 from Chris Young. Swing and a foul tip. Hey, we ordered up another nice day for you. Hey, not bad. Two grouses. And the pen, they've been rocking since 10 30. Gates open, they swarm. A lot of fun out there, as per usual, as this one. Foul back. Chris Young has faced the Braves before, of course, in his days at. San Diego and with the New York Mets is two and four. Not fair well over his last four starts going 0 and three. And Bonifacio is done. Easy play for Cano. One out. Take a look at the rest of the defense for the Mariners this afternoon. Ackley getting the start in left field. Jackson in center. Indy Chavez out in right. Kyle Seager, your third baseman. Taylor and Cano playing up the middle. Logan Morrison is at first. And Jesus Sucre will get the job behind the plate this afternoon. Here's Tommy LaStella. His error. A door opener for the Mariners in the fourth inning last night. Scored two runs on that drop pop in short right field and then Jackson followed with a base hit. And that was all the scoring the Mariners did last evening. Cano going back. Taylor going back. And called off by Jackson. Two outs. And Austin, you can see the glasses are on. He's going to get an opportunity to figure out what the sun is all about here at Safeco Field. Day game on Wednesday. He calls off the infielders. And he didn't seem to have much of a problem with it. Dustin Ackley out in left field. He's got his sunglasses on. And he's got his on in right field. Here's Freddie Freeman. 
Finished third in the National League in batting last year at 319. Michael Kedair won the batting title and Chris Johnson, third baseman for the Braves, was second. Raymond 0 for 4 last night. Cano made a heck of a play on him for the first out in the ninth inning last evening. Braves have lost seven consecutive ball games. Washington lost last night, so they're still just three back of the Nationals. And the Nationals will be in town there. Final. National League East opponent the Mariners have faced this season. That'll be the last three days here in August. Right here at Safeco Field. 3 1. Good foul. That looked like it was the slider from Chris. Chris's fastball, 84 to 87 miles an hour. He'll mix in a curveball, slider, and change. Again, looking for his 10th win on the season. Fly ball pitcher. 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Sucre holds on. Freeman's gone. So are the Braves in the first. Fine start for Chris Young. She tries to win his 10th game of the season. Mariners giving it back. Well, Felix Hernandez fan sure was watching last night. Might have even been here last night as Felix picked up his 12th win against three losses in the Mariners' 4-2 victory. Let's take a look at the Mariner batting order that will face Julio Tehran. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Chevron. Jackson will lead off, and it is exactly what a hot hitter he has been lately for the Mariners. Cano, Morales, Seager in the middle of the lineup. Chris Taylor moves up. He will hit six. Logan Morrison. Six game hitting streak for him and a 400 hitter against Tehran. He will hit seventh. Chavez and Sucre rounding out the nine for the Mariners. For Tehran, 10 and 7 record, a 2.69 ERA. One of the best opponents batting average against in the National League at just 2.25. He has given up 16 home runs this year. Good fastball. He'll be in the low 90s with his fastball, curveball, slider change. Bonifacio getting the start in left field. BJ Upton in center. Hayward out in right. And on the infield, Chris Johnson at third. Pena will do. The work at shortstop today. Listella and Freeman on the right side of the infield, and Evan Gaddis will do the catching. Tehran coming off of a good outing against the Dodgers, really pitched well. Eight innings, gave up just two earned runs, and took the loss in that one. Again, one of the best curveballs in the National League, rated second best to Adam Wainwright. Here's Austin Jackson to get things started for the Mariners in the first. In there for a strike. It's in the 274 home runs. 34 runs batted in. The majority of that obviously with Detroit. Three for 15 since joining the Mariners. Inside corner for a strike. Got his first safe cold field Mariner hit an RBI last night.
Duran will throw strikes. Only 34 walks in 157 innings for him. All two strikes. They run out of Cartagena in Colombia, 6'2, 200. Third season with the big club. What 14 and 8 last year, a 3-2-0 here. And he did go. Breakout victory. Jackson's gone one down. So Jackson not able to lay off of the breaking ball. 82 miles an hour, well off the plate away. And he has his best pitch. Dustin Ackley, hottest hitter the Mariners have over the last 17 games, a 357 clip since the All Star break. Think some extra base hits too. Eight doubles, a couple of home runs. He's driven in eight runs over the 17 games. Boyd McClendon on the road trip, moving him up to hitting second in the lineup. There's a strike one one. Four night last evening for Ackley. Great crowd, 30,000 plus expected this afternoon. Estella off his glove. Ackley is aboard. That should be a base hit for Dustin. And Darren Perdur, the official scorer, he agrees. Take a look at it again. He has just consistently hit the ball hard. He was 0 for 4 last night, but. Squared it up a couple of times. You take a look at this swing. Hard ground ball back up the middle. Handcuffs La Stella. Looks like it hits off the heel of his glove. Would have been a difficult play for him, even if he made it cleanly. Dustin gets down the line in good shape. Thanks, Jeff Robinson Cano. Three twenty nine second to Jose Jose Altuve's three thirty seven. Top two hitters in the American League. But McClendon really pleased with the play that he made last night. Freeman hit a ball hard, ranged over, made the play. And we were talking about as you and I talk about his throwing ability and he said you can't believe how heavy his ball is because with that wrist snap he does particularly when he's coming three low or three quarter or sidearm actually that wrist snap and put so much spin, spin on it on and the ball comes in it's like Whoa, your what yeah. was that he said, <laughs> Lord was, it was like it's getting like getting a punch from Mike Tyson in your hand like we, we, boom. we talked about it on the road trip we were laughing a little bit when Felix was pitching exactly. and you know he did the same thing in short and distance yeah and it surprised Felix and they were both laughing about it after the fact but I think it surprised him yeah, yeah. You remember Robbie closed the distance and Felix was there in good shape he fouls this one back and again, we you know, just can't help but marvel at the accuracy of the guy. With all his throws, turn a heck of a double play. As you pointed out last night, used the bag beautifully to protect himself. Ernest turned a big double play in the seventh inning. There's Felix. Another fabulous performance by him last evening. Eight innings of four hit, one run ball, one walk, and eight strikeouts. Three and two count out of Cano. Edwish Morales on deck. Again with Tehran on the mound, it will be difficult for the Mariners to steal. He has a great move to first. A right-handed pitcher last year had eight pickoffs. That led the National League. He, he's quick feet, good athlete. Rare he can say a right hander has that effect of a move. Ackley was on the move. That was ball four. So the Mariners with one out have runners at first and second for Kedris Morales, their DH. 
It's one of the things we talk about. Quality pitchers. Want to get to them early if you can. And Jerron having some issues here in the first. Like see the Mariners take advantage of that. 2.69 ERA for Tehran already a 10 game winner and opponents batting average against a 225. Early opportunity here for the Mariners. Left six men on base last night. Only one in the starting lineup. Who has previously seen Tehran is Logan Morris. First time around. And he's struggling with his command. 15 pitches, only six strikes from him. Evan Gaddis, the catcher, making a trip out to the mound, try to settle him down. But a good count for Morales now, take advantage of it. Freddie Gonzalez in his fourth year took over for Hall of Famer Bobby Cox. 337 wins. He had four years with the Marlins. And skipper 2 0 pitch. 3 0. Kyle Seeger, who's up next? Thirty four walks against one hundred forty one strikeouts coming into today's game here for Tehran. Three oh. Strike. He has given up sixteen home runs this year. See if Morales can take advantage of a three one count. Tehran selected to the all star team. This season. There's a great opportunity for Morales and the Mariners. Left field for Bonifacio. Runners have to retreat. Two outs. I think Morales helped him out a little bit there. That pitch looked like it was off the plate away. But that will bring up Kyle Seeger. Kyle leads the club in RBIs with 67. He's only two RBIs short of what his season total was from last year. 69 RBIs last year, 67 now. It's August 6th. Not bad. Lloyd brought up another interesting point, too. I know you can relate to this. He said, you know, August 1st is when the season begins, if you're in contention. And the Mariners very much are in contention. <laughs> right. <laughs> is it a guy's are you know, handling it well, he said. He told him, said, enjoy the experience. And the only two guys who've been through this, uh, Cano obviously, and Austin Jackson during his time in Detroit. That's a great experience for him, and you can see Kyle doing the bulk of his damage here at home. And Rodney has tasted the excitement of the stretch run as well on a contending team. Oh, one to Kyle. Line drive right field that'll get down in front of Hayward coming around exactly he scores and holding it second is Cano Seager drives in his 68th run and the Mariners have a one nothing lead over the Braves here in the first inning. Kyle clutching up with two outs gets a good fastball to hit. Pitch down the middle of the plate hits it hard. Ron actually fortunate that he didn't elevate. It's just a screaming line drive in the right field. Handcuffs Hayward out and right. He just tries to block it. So Ackley's able to score easy on the play. That's how hard Kyle hit it. They Cano thought about going to third, had to scramble to get back into second. There's Chris Taylor. Some strike one. I thought it was interesting to see the lineup today and see Chris hitting sixth in the lineup. He had been hitting ninth. You know, Lloyd believes in that merit system. You hit, well, you move up. Seven starts. He's hitting all of his starts. <laughs> all seven it. starts for him. Comes into the game hitting 357. Had a double in last night's game. Interesting watching as you get BJ Upton in center field. And he likes to play pretty shallow. 
And we've already seen Taylor this week hit one over the head of Adam Jones in Baltimore and Bonifacio last night. Goes to check with Brian Gordon. Well, the Braves learned quickly, and one of the things they found out is Chris Taylor can hit a fastball. All three breaking balls to him so far. One of the things we talked about with Chris, great to see him get off to a good start, but the league will make some adjustments. So we'll see what he does to adjust back. Make the learning curve when you're right in the chase. So far, so good. He's been up to it. In the dirt. That's one of the things we talked about. One of the things I liked about him when he first came up. He's aggressive on the fastball. So the Braves. Four breaking balls in a row. And their scouts aren't missing anything, are they? No. No. Struck him out. Mariners do pick up a run. On two hits and leave a couple. Kyle Seeger has the Mariners in front, one nothing. Field in Seattle on this glorious Wednesday. And coming up, the Chicago White Sox will be in town. Our Century Link link to what's next. Here's a look at the pitching matchups Carroll against Elias, Quintana against Iwakuma, Hector Nuesu beat the Mariners back in Chicago around, I think it was July 4th, against James Paxton and John Banks against the starter to be named later, who's a hard throwing right hander, probably. Who the heck knows? Looking at that lineup, the best part about it. Chris Sale is not pitching. He's pitching today against the Rangers. He's already thrown 111 pitches, so the Mariners will miss him, one of the best pitchers in the American League. That's good news for him. He's trailing 2 0, bottom six to the Rangers. <laughs> Was that devastating? That game we saw it. Oh, 97 <laughs> miles an hour with a hard breaking ball. Have, was, have mercy on the left handers. Yeah. That was crazy. Justin Upton. Is the hitter cleanup man DHing today five for 12 career against Khrushchev. Justin one for four. The ground rule double in the second and an RBI ground out in the ninth. Right two. Justin didn't like that at all. It's better for home plate umpire. That's one of the advantages that Chris has had this year, I think, is the umpires, I, I think, have consistently called that high strike right at the top of the zone, and that has helped Chris. Swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts for Chris Young. One out here in the second for years. He sat at the helm as Seattle's manager. Now he's going to take his rightful place in the Mariners Hall of Fame. Join us Saturday.
as we induct Lou Pinnell as the eighth member in a special pregame ceremony starting at 5.30. Plus, the first 20,000 fans are going to take home a bobblehead of Sweet Lou thanks to Root Sports. Be part of this memorable night when you get your tickets at Mariners.com. All right, what's the thing you're most looking forward to seeing Lou back as this one's grounded by Hayward to Pinnell. Two down. Oh, there are a lot of things. One, just to see him. And I've heard that he looks great, so that that'll be nice. I'm looking forward to the ovation that he's going to get from the crowd. Boy, that will be thunderous. Yeah, it, it will be. And then the other thing is just what's been going on this week um, here at the ballpark, showing all, a lot of the highlights, including yesterday. We saw highlights of him when he was in his playing days, but uh, brings back a lot of good memories from the time that I played for Lou. So there's a lot of good things to like. 4:30 on Saturday. Oh. Pre-game show have a lot of his uh, playing days highlights. What? How about one lesson that you learned from him that carried you through your career? Or maybe, maybe even help you turn I, a corner. I, I found out something quickly, and I heard Jay talking about it. Um, one thing that I learned that, that stayed with me the, the rest of my career is a random ball game against the Tigers in June is just as important as any game you'll play in September Amen. and the man wanted to win every night uh, and how important those games were and if you if you can get to the point as a collective group that you're not giving away those types of games at the end of the season your job becomes a lot easier but they're all important and it's a difficult things at times these guys with their schedule 162 games throw spring training on top of that it's a lot of baseball and at times I think your focus um, you get a little lackadaisical about it and we would do that from time to time too but he didn't miss it right after the game he would let us know about it and how important it was to him and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why things turned around here in Seattle. How about Chris Young? That's a good looking second inning. Racks up his third strikeout. Keys two in this inning as he's bidding for his tenth win of the season only needed 11 pitches. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports being brought to you by CenturyLink. You're a link to what's next by BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast. And by Jack in a Box. Head to Jack in a Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or Barbecue Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants. As you look at Haystack, top of the Mount Sai, 4,167 feet. Roquami Valley to your left. There's a gorgeous sight. That's a serious hike. Out of my league, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it's the 500 feet of gaff and fiber and trail, says Curtis Wilson, our producer. <laughs> Uncle! Out of the three of us, he's the one that would know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. Look at Morrison way out in front. One on one. Morrison, Chavez, Sucre. Here in the second. Almost four for ten career against Julio Tehran. They run seventh in the National League in ERA. One and two. Tehran's also thrown two shutouts. He's second in innings pitch. Fourth, or tied for fourth. Batting average against 225. It's really good news for Logan Morrison. Is one has a six-game hitting streak, hitting 316 over the six games. Also a 400 hitter against Tehran. Hopefully this is a good afternoon for him. And certainly not off to a good start. Good it's good ball. It really was. As advertised. That's three strikeouts for Tehran. We'll take a look at it. Good pitch right at the bottom of the knees, 80 miles an hour. Kid's only 23 years old. Man. There's Indy Chavez. And at third is Chris Johnson. A look at defensive alignment. Johnson, Pena, Lestella, and Freeman on the infield. Caddis behind the plate with Bonifacio, Upton, and Hayward in the outfield. And hopefully Andrelton Simmons will have a quick recovery after that freak accident yesterday, going to cover third and rolled his ankle. Slapped the other way through the hole. Base hit for Andy Chavez with one out here in the second inning. Andy gets a fastball away. Two seamer running away from him. It is on the outside corner. It is elevated about belt high. And he takes advantage of the hole on the left side of the infield. Chavez aboard four out of five in base dealing. Here's Jesus Sucre. Recalled from Tacoma back on July 8th. John Buck was cut loose by the Mariners. Day off of Mike Zanino, the Mariners' everyday catcher. Mike went one for three last night. So he fell back. So great. 48 games at Tacoma hit two. 74. Breaking ball popped out. Shortstop takes it. Pena. Two away in the Mariners second. Don't miss the final fireworks night of the season. It's coming up Friday, August 29th. Mariners in National Square up at 7:10. Then after the game, going to pay tribute to the Emerald City. Skyline's going to be lit up with spectacular fireworks set to a playlist that celebrates. Yep, you got it. Seattle's iconic music scene. Visit Mariners.com. Pick up your tickets for this fun family event. In the second time around, here's Austin Jackson. And you can see the quick feet from Tehran on that pickoff move to first. We were talking about it in the first inning. And eight pickoffs last year, the most by a right handed pitcher in the National League. Quick feet. Line drive, Lestella's got it. Well, do it for the Mariners. No runs ahead, no errors, and the man left. 1 0, Seattle.
Nothing Mariners leading. Good luck at Seaplane landing at Lake Union. Let's take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Wrap it up today with the Brave Sox in for four important games, as are the three with the Blue Jays. Then a day off, that'll be a travel day next week, and then back to the East Coast, Detroit, Philly, and Boston. Get a healthy dose of I-95 there. <laughs> Philly and Boston trips. Here's Evan Gaddis. Catcher. Was DHing in last night's ball game. And Mike Zanino, 17 home runs tied for second behind Devin Mezzarocco. The Reds line drive into the gap. Base hit. First base hit for the Braves. Pretty good pitch off the plate away. He just reaches out right off the end of the bat. A little soft line drive out into left center. Trying to keep the ball away from him. That's a good idea. Again, 17 home runs on the year. I'll bring a BJ up to nobody in the major leagues has struck out more than he has 139 times. Career is two for three against Chris Young. Starts today, 458 plate appearances and 139 Ks. Strike one. BJ in center field. Hitting just 211. Earlier part of the season, he was the leadoff man for the Braves. It didn't work out very well. And he will do that. Chase a lot of breaking balls off the plate away. Saw plenty of that when he was with the Rays. Let's say overall disappointment to the Braves and what he's been able to do for him. Great throw to him, struck out to the Chris Young, two and two. Off the plate, as you can see there. It's back, the whole plate umpire. And he strikes out the, for the 140th time. That's four Ks on the afternoon for Chris Young. We play here in the third with one out. Well, Chris gets prepared as well as anybody, and he goes right back to the breaking ball just off the plate away. Take a look at it in our McDonald's Supermo. There it is. Good slider off the plate away. Brings up Romero Pena, switch hitter. And he's playing in place of the injured and Andleton Simmons, who hurt himself covering third base last night. Golden Ake, and that was ugly. Okay. He's listed as day to day. Hopefully, he'll be back soon. A lot of ice. Keep it elevated. Mm hmm. Young man, he'll heal quickly, I would think. Pass Morrison in the right field for base hit. Gaddis will hold at second. Zeddy Chavez hits a cutoff man. He's hit for Payne. Two on here, one out in the third. Well, he gets a fastball down in the zone, but in the middle of the plate and finds a hole on the right side. With Gaddis at first, Morrison holding him on. And we'll take a look at it. Gaddis, well, I thought maybe he was going to have to wait for the ball to get past him. Fortunate that it didn't hit him in the foot. Chris will now work through the lineup for the second time. Bonifacio grounded out to Cano his first time. That's going to drop in front of Jackson. They will hold Gaddis at third. So a little dunk shot by Bonifacio has loaded him up. Just that couple, quickly. Yeah. A couple of broken bat base hits. One by Gaddis and now this one by Bonifacio.
Gaddis's base hit off the end of the bat. That one jams him. Base is loaded with Braves. And a two hole hitter. Second baseman Tommy Lestella, who's grounded into five double plays on the season. Six would be really timely right here. Is loaded this year. Lestella five for seven. Ten runs batted in. No homers. The two one. Three one count. Jackson shading towards his left center. Expecting Lestella to hit the ball the other way. Actually a little bit closer to the line. And walks in a run. One one ball game. RBI for Lestella's 25th. Gaddis scores. Everybody else moves up. Pretty good eye by Lestella. A couple of fastballs right at the bottom of the strike zone. Just missing the bottom of the zone. Fourth and fifth pitch right there. Chris Young's first walk of the ball game proves costly. Now he's got Freddie Freeman. Base is still loaded. One out. Freddie struck out his first time. That's yeah. some problems. Scoring. Pena, Bonifacio, La Stella to the play, and they got him. A damage done by Freddie Freeman. And Freddie Gonzalez out quickly to talk to Lance Barrett. We'll take a look at it. It's a good relay. Jackson gets it in quickly to Taylor. Taylor has a strong arm. We saw that last night with the diving play that he made. Throw a little bit high, but Sucre able to make the adjustment and gets the tag down quickly. And you can see he just drops down shin guards. That stops Lestella in his slide. We'll take another look at it. But he plants his foot right in front of the plate. That is a great play by the catcher Sucre. He, you have to be strong with mm. all the momentum that Lestella had going coming into the plate and to stop him cold like that is a great play by Sucre. He's given him the outside he has to now he has to make the adjustment because of the throw and he just lands right in front of the plate. Good play. 8-6-2 on the put out. Sucre, nice athletic play. See the shadow of the ball coming in. Right there, there it is. One foul back on two. Atlanta three run inning. For sure I'm trying to stop the bleeding right here. All and two to Justin Upton.
Andrew can ask for umpire review. You don't have to challenge there because of plate blockage. That's probably what Gonzalez was mm -hmm. doing. They wanted from his angle, you know, from the dugout. He was thinking, hey, wait, was he blocking plate? And I think Lance Barrett, the home plate umpire, saw the same thing that we did, Dave. With he, he just had to make an adjustment to go catch the ball. There's nothing else that he can do, and he just happened to land his feet landing right in front of the plate. I think he was okay with that. Not much of a fight from Gonzalez. Swing and a miss. Upton's gone, but the Braves, they put three on the board to take the lead. 3-1 here in Seattle. Hits in the top half of the third right now. Time for a Geico. This date in MLB history. Satchel Page listed at 47 years old on this date in 1952 becomes the oldest pitcher to throw a complete game shutout, beat the Tigers 1-0 in 12 innings. That is amazing. Yes, sir. 12 innings. And I just a shame that there's no significant game action film recorded of uh Satchel Page, Josh Gibson, and those folks back in the Negro Leagues. Heard a lot, read a lot, and heard a lot of great things about those men. Ackley, Cano, Morales, 2 3 4 here in the third inning. Clear on with the lead. Breaking ball over two. Ackley with an infield hit his first time. He has scored the one run for the Mariners. Two strikes. Mariners take a first inning lead. Seeger, base hit to right. Scored Ackley. But now in the top of the third, an RBI bases loaded walk by Listella and a two run double by Freddie Freeman. Stay Ron and the Braves ahead. Oh boy. Hit well. Deep right field. It's traveling out of here. Home run, Dustin Ackley, his seventh. It's a 3 2 ball game. Ackley with his 38th RBI. And he continues to pound the baseball since the All Star break. Well, this is one of the things that we've talked about with Dustin Ackley. He has such quick hands. And when he looks out over the plate and adjusts to the fastball inside, he is so much better. That pitch right on the inside corner. The ball really jumps off of his bat. Again, you can see him just stay right behind this. Pulling his hands in tight, barrels it up. Ball one to Cano. I had the sound of an instant gone, didn't it? Yes, it did. 
Cano walked his first time. 372 feet on that blast by Ackley. Curveball is Theron's best pitch. Fourth Mariner hit. Update on Ackley two for two today. 375 since the All Star break. 27 of 72. Mariner's going to make this run here and get a playoff spot. Boy, let him continue what he's doing. Talking about Ackley. Center field for BJ Upton. One out. Next up, Kendrick Morales. Beautiful day here in Seattle. 67 degrees. Slight breeze blowing. From left field foul pole across to right field. Friday will be the Lou Pinella Hall of Fame luncheon and then a big ceremony on Saturday night. Weather said to be good for both days. One on to Morales. Curves we've seen from a right hander this year. He has really good stuff, and again, in the first inning, didn't have his best command trying to figure things out. Only 23 years old, made the all star team this year, but he looks like he's starting to settle down now. A lot of his pitches are down in the zone, working ahead of hitters. It was a struggle in the first, but he's made some adjustments. One two. And Morales strikes out. Fourth strike after two round. Two down here in the third. <laughs> Upcoming series. White Sox come to town. Blue Jays three big ones here at Safe Go Field, and then on the road at Detroit. What a pitching staff we're going to see there. For Toronto, it's a team that hits the ball out of the yard with great frequency, and the, the White Sox. Are not completely done yet in terms of the wild card chase. It's a big homestand for the Mariners. Started off well with Felix on the mound yesterday. He will get that first game against the Blue Jays on Monday. Uh, Mariners with a great opportunity to start that series with Felix on the mound. Let's check down the third. Ben Hoberg. Seager did go 0 and 2. Well back. Talking about that Toronto ball club, second in batting average, third in runs, third in hits, second in homers, first in on base, second in slugging. Ball hit through the hole, base hit. Second base hit of the game for Kyle. You know, listening to those numbers with the Blue Jays, it'll, that'll be interesting because they will be going up against the best pitching staff in the American League here, and the here. Seattle Mariners. So we'll see how that works. But Kyle, his second base hit, both of them in the right field. The first one was a line drive into right, picked up an RBI, and this a base hit, hard ground ball through the right side of the infield. Kyle has really swung the bat well all year here at Safeco Field. Came into the game with a 348 batting average at Safeco. 
Bring up Chris Taylor. Chris saw a variety of breaking balls his first time up. There's a good fastball to hit and he missed it. 92 miles an hour right in the middle of the plate. Called up on July 24th. Positive effect in this ball club. Back with a dive is Seeger. Check swing. Well, Stella ranging over. Everybody safe. Base hit. Well, it was an accident. He didn't mean to do it. The defense playing back up the middle. Estella, the second baseman, playing up the middle. And a little check swing. It was just a firm push button. <laughs> pick up a base hit. So, good situation. Logan Morrison. Morrison striking out his first time up, but again, a 400 hitter against Tehran. And he's been on a pretty good run himself. Six game hitting streak coming into the game. Picked up a base hit in an RBI last night. There is Skipper Lloyd McClendon today. Just a matter of swinging a bat, not thinking too much. See what happens. Shoot it off the end of the bat. Six men to the plate here in the third. They run a struck out four. Walked one. Here in this inning, a leadoff homer to Ackley. Seager, the tying run at second base. High drive right field. Going back. Hayward looking up. And the Mariners have taken the lead on a three run jack by Lobo. Logan Morrison with his sixth home run. Takes his RBI total at 22. His fifth career hit of a Julio Tehran. Got it on an 0 1 pitch. Now we'll extend his hitting streak to seven games now. And Dave, you and I have talked about it. He's somebody, if he can get hot for the Mariners, make a big difference over the last two months. And this is a huge hit with a couple of outs. The Mariners down a run. Actually gets in on his hands a little bit, gives you an idea how strong he is. His sixth home run of the year. But more importantly, picks up three RBIs with that swing. Gives Chris Young and the Mariners a two run lead. Good to see a two, two homer inning by the Mariners. Ackley a leadoff homer, and now Morris in a three run blast. Two seam fastball, wanted to get it away from him, but he leaves it in the middle of the plate. Going back is Listella. Makes the play, but a big inning for the Mariners. Two home runs. Nice catch by the fan out there. Ackley with a home run. A three-run shot by Morrison. Back and forth we go. The Mariners respond with four in the bottom of the third to take a 5-3 lead.
sides. A home run by Ackley, a three run homer by Morrison. And the Mariners have responded quickly and regained the lead at five to three. The hunt for a postseason berth is going to heat up next week. Robinson Cano, Kyle Seeger and the Mariners host Jose Bautista, Jose Reyes and the Blue Jays for an important three game series. It all starts Monday night when Felix takes them out against Toronto. Make sure you're part of the exciting playoff chase. Pick up your tickets at Mariners.com. Get to see Kawasaki again, too. Yep, that's right. Jason Hayward delayed it off. High Hayward. energy. <laughs> That's, yeah, <laughs> you think? <laughs> Tell you what, he's contributed nicely to that ball club this year, too. Bounced up there. It'll be Hayward, Chris Johnson, and Evan Gaddis. Five, six, and seven for the Braves. And on a line, base hit by Hayward. He has been a very hot hitter for Los Bravos. It is now time for you to tweet your photos using the hashtag Mariners fan photo for a chance to have it shown later in the game brought to you by AT&T. See the Mariners clutching up this afternoon Four of the five runs coming with two outs. Hayward aboard extends his hitting streak to four games. Pitch there by Chris Young against Chris Johnson, who took a called third strike in the second inning. I think this is a good matchup for Chris. Johnson, a good low ball hitter, and a lot of pitches from Chris will be up in the zone. That last pitch a little bit off the plate away. Hayward back safely. Tampa Bay Rays lead at Oakland top of the fourth Kiermaier two run homer fourth inning off of Sonny Gray. Oh two to Johnson. Morrison will take a look might top hang five. in there for him. He hangs with it nicely done. Tough play. He gets back in pretty good shape of fighting the sun. A little bit of wind, and he knows that short wall is coming out soon. He was a step away from it. So good concentration from Logan. Having a nice ball game. Three run homer. Able to make that play help his pitcher out. Bring up Evan Gaddis. Both the single to left center's first time. Chris Young really enjoying this season. Happy that he's talking to him last week. Happy that he's able to keep his team in the running pretty much in every ball game. Swing and a miss. Looking Happy that he's able to pitch pain free. Oh, no doubt about it. Coming off that long time shoulder problem this all of last year. Went 4 9 with the Mets in 2012. Gonna go double figure wins for the third time in his career. Checked down the first, didn't go. Strike again. And I see a lot of it. A lot of guys they just can't lay off of it. They see it so well and they think they can get to it, but he'll throw a lot of pitches not only at the top of the strike zone, but like that last one up out of the zone. A lot of major league hitters to chase that pitch. 
I'm the thing that's going to be satisfying for Chris Young with today's action. He's at 132 and two thirds innings. It's the most innings he's pitched since he went for 173 back with the 07 uh, Padres. He made the All Star team that year, going nine and eight, three five two ERA. Her best 179 and a third in 06. <laughs> Good pitches on the outside corner, spoiled by Gaddis. This guy's got good plate coverage. And another one, Chris. Good reason being careful with them again. Gaddis, 17 home runs on the year. All the last three pitches, all of them on the outside corner. With Evan Gaddis, and then I'll bring up BJ Upton, who struck out on a 2 2 pitch. Breakout number 140 for BJ, most in the major leagues. He was able to get Upton to swing at some pitches off the plate away. He was throwing his breaking ball just off the plate, down and away, and kept waving at it. See if he goes right back there again, and he does. Left center field, long run for Ackley and Jackson. Ackley's yes, under, lost it in the sun, one hops the fence. That's fortunate that it bounced over the fence because with a couple of outs and Hayward's speed, he would have scored on it. He'll have to go back to third. Chris went back to the breaking ball, but that one was in the middle of the plate. Didn't get it down and away from him. And the flags are blowing from left to right, but this ball had some carry to it. Dustin goes back, now he can't see it. Again, bouncing over the fence, a good break for the Mariners. Rick Waits, the pitching coach, is going to go out and have a conversation with Chris and Dustin trying to let Jackson know that he can't see it, but Jackson was just too far away from it. Number nine hitter, Pena do up. Pena had a base hit his first time up. Had an off speed pitch and was able to pull it through the hole on the right side of the infield. Chris still with an opportunity to get out of this inning with a couple of outs. Hayward started the inning with a base hit to right. Johnson fouled out. Caddis popped up. Now the ground rule doubled by BJ Upton. Nine hole hitter Pena. Nine runs aboard. Here we go, one and oh. There's a strike, one one. Pena again seeing action because of Anton Simmons' ankle injury in last night's ball game. One one. Bouncing ball to Cano. Got the nice hop. And Chris Young survives. So no runs, two hits, no errors, two left. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Mariners still leading at five to three.
Here in Seattle, you look at Safeco Field where the Mariners have a 5-3 lead. Step up to the plate. Hit one out of the park with savings on Sound Transit. Rethink your commute and visit soundtransit.org. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew. Well, day baseball midweek. Wrapping up this series with the Braves. Trying to complete a season series. Mariners swept two in Atlanta. Next up, the Chicago White Sox. Century link link to what's next. Rowetta Salias will take the mound against Scott Carroll. Then Quintana against Iwakuma. The Wesley against Paxton. Mariners haven't made up their mind on the Sunday starter against left-hander John Danks. There's Jesus Sucre to lead it off. Bottom of the fourth. Sucre popped up to the shortstop his first time. Sucre, Austin Jackson, and Ackley, 9 1 and 2. Just joining us, you miss a Mariner fireworks in the third inning. Ackley let off with a homer. And with two men aboard, Logan Morrison, his fifth career hit off of Tehran, hit a three run homer. And regained the lead for the Mariners. Well, the Mariners have made him work hard again coming into the game. Having a good year, a 2.69 ERA, opponents average against just 2.25. Morrison, the only Mariner that has seen Tehran, it had success. He was a 400 hitter before the home run and drives in three runs with it, but they've made him work. Pitch count getting up on him 63 pitches, 43 strikes. And home run for Morrison, his first since July 11th against Oakland. Swing and a miss. He's gone. Fifth strike after two round. One away in the fourth. Now the owner Austin Jackson for the third time. A strikeout in the lineout today. Last time up, getting a slider that was away from him. Hit it hard, but right at Lestella, the second baseman. Kevin, this young man at center field, move forward, really covered. And having had so much experience at Comerica Park, gonna feel right here, at, right at home here at Safeco Field. Two spacious ballparks, two way. Time for our Seattle City Light power play, and you gotta like this: one-two pitch, leading off the third, a boom. For Dustin Ackley. His seventh home run of the year. He's hit three home runs in the last week and a half. Again, been a hot hitter since the All Star break. He's two for two this afternoon. Scored a couple of runs and obviously drove himself in with that home run. Quick inning for Tehran as shorts up Pena is going to give way to the center fielder Upton. And the Mariners go one, two, three, and a fourth. The lead five to three as Tehran uses just five pitches in this frame.
for the sweep against Atlanta. And we've got another Coors Light Silver Bullet Saturday, August 9th. It's against the White Sox. First 400 fans, 21 and older, in the pen during early happy hour at the rail bar. You're going to get a Silver Bullet Saturday T-shirt and extended happy hour pricing until first pitch. Plus, you can catch a specially marked Coors Light ball during Mariners BP that day. And you know what? It'll win you tickets to an upcoming ball game. This will be an interesting inning for Chris Young. Third time through the lineup, Bonifacio, the leadoff hitter, stepping in and for Chris with a two run lead qualifies if he can get through this inning looking for his 10th win on the year. 67 pitches for him, 45 strikes. Nineteen batters base, 12 first pitch strikes in good shape there. Bonifacio had some speed and the elements he brings to the Braves. Just the fourth series for the Mariners against Atlanta. Last time they got together was here at Safeco Field in 2011. Jackson cruising over. That was the last time before this uh, two two game series in 11, and then in 08, the Mariners played at Atlanta, went one and two, and then in 03 was the first meeting. And the Mariners won two out of three. Tommy Lestella, the hitter. This is loaded walk. And a fly to center. Break one. Great start to this nine game homestand last night with a victory for the Mariners. Now seven and ten since the All Star break. Well, the Braves struggling. They've lost seven consecutive games. Punch foul. One from Chris. Jackson way over the left center field and not deep for Estella. High. He's tried to get him to chase a couple of pitches off the plate away, and Estella hasn't done it. Will count. In his tracks has to give some ground and he's there. And all right, locale just had to drop back a little bit, two away. Really good play by Jackson. Line drive, that's the toughest play. The thing that he did is he drops his left foot, didn't make a decision right away. A lot of outfielders would take a step in if they're not sure. He just froze, and then when he saw that the ball was going to be a little bit deeper, was able to get back in plenty of time. Played that one perfectly. We saw a little bit of that from Bonifacio last night in center field. He took a couple steps in twice in the game and had to go back and was fortunate to get back on one. Was not able to get back on the ball that Taylor hit. One two to Freddie Freeman. Strikeout victim and de delivered a two run double third inning. Two to Freeman. Blah, blah. Two and two. Freddie 
Freeman having a heck of a year. 15 home runs and 60 runs batted in third on a team in homers and second in RBIs to Justin Upton. 2 2. Took a lot off. Only to get a piece of it. And they got a piece of Sucre as well. Long at bat for Freeman. You see that quite a bit with Chris on the mound. He'll have a couple of guys in the lineup. Well, they'll fight him pretty good. And we've seen that in this one today. His pitch count starting to climb on him. Next pitch will be 85 working here in the fifth. 2 2. Off the plate. But the good news for the Mariners, they had Monday off. And of course, Felix going eight innings yesterday. The bullpen in great shape. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Justin Upton on deck. 3 2 pitch. Lined in the right center field. Jackson gets it back in. A base hit for Freddie Freeman is two for three in the afternoon. Ninth pitch of the at bat, and this pitch right at the top of the strike zone. As you look at our McDonald Supermo. Try to throw a little cutter. Try to get it in on his hands. Didn't quite get it there. Justin Upton struck out twice. One one to Justin. Joe Bible start heating up. Well, it's Tom Wilhelmson. Young's got a 1 1 pitch coming. 2 and 1. A lot of pitches in the inning. 23 pitches. Next pitch will be 90 for the game. And their first strike count even to two and two. Two outs and a man at first. There's a season high 108 pitches. That was against Baltimore. Two two. Struck him out. Big strikeout for Chris Young. Through five. He struck out six three times. He's Cade Justin Upton, a 5-3 Mariner lead.
home runs back in a third some Mariner offense and that's the topic here Bill Kruger our senior baseball analyst joins us right now Bill your thoughts on the offensive production here so far. Well Dave it's been big uh, you know the three run homer by Morrison of course a solo shot by Dustin Ackley and that seems obvious the Mariners don't slug very well last in the American League in slugging home runs are great. But I really think it's more than that. It's so critical, Dave, to their offensive production. I mean, they're 37 and 16 when they homer. They're 21 and 38 when they don't. This isn't a team you say to yourself, well, why don't they manufacture runs? Well, they don't walk. And they don't really hit for a high average. They really need to take every opportunity to swing when they got people on base and hopefully slug a little bit. Slugging is more than just homers. Doubles, triples, home runs. That's what they need to win. Today, they got in spades. Great to see it come from first base. Well, I, I agree with you Bill and I, I think it's also good to see the Mariners scoring four out of the five runs with two outs clutching up the one thing that they have done well for the most part this year is hit with runners in scoring position they've been above that 250 average which as you know is, is, is quite a jump for them what we've seen over the last three or four years but I, I think the home runs certainly will help and you're right at first base Logan Morrison is somebody that can be big for them over the last two months of the year. So I think it's great to see and of course we both also know what their record is when they score more than four runs because of the strength of their pitching staff and I made the comment I think the bullpen is in pretty good shape and how big are those guys going to be the rest of the way out for them. Oh they're going to be huge the great eight I mean you got six righties and two lefties and there's no slippage as you go along and of course Lloyd McLennan's had the benefit of that he could just line these guys up like bowling pins and then just knock them down. Here's Cano down the right field line bobbled by Hayward a couple of times and Robbie's in with a double. What, what I'm getting at is most teams when you chase the starter like it looks like Chris Young's out of the ballgame I may or may not be correct on that. Normally you're going to get a softer part of the bullpen with most teams even good teams because the elite guys usually don't get there till the seventh or eighth. But you're talking about elite people top to bottom. Whether it's Joe Bimel or uh, Wilhelmson in this ball game, or a lot of times Maurer and Leon, both those guys above the 95 line with wipeout sliders. This parade starts early and it's tough, and that's what's allowed the Mariners, uh, you know, to play in so many games and keep their bullpen fresh. Today, we're going to see that breath play out. Well, I, I think for myself, you and I both have been around this organization for a long time and seen a lot of baseball games. I agree with you. I think top to bottom, this is the best bullpen that they've ever had. And it's been critical for them. And it's the reason why they've been able to not only stay in games, but win a number of games, Bill. And I, I think that for them, it's going to be important. I also think that Lloyd has done a good job managing that bullpen over the course of the summer, understanding that they're at that point now. We're in August to where how critical they're going to be. So some great comments, Bill. Thanks a lot. And. We'll talk to you after this game is over. Okay, Mike, thank you. Good opportunity for the Mariners leadoff double for Cano. See if Morales can move him along. 26 double for Robbie. It did go at Hobart. You know, with his 26 double takes over the team lead. James Russell, the left hander, he pitched in last night's ball game, getting loose. Tehran right now at 75 pitches. But he has not been sharp this afternoon. The Mariners have been able to take advantage of that. Mariners jump on top. First inning, RBI single by Seeger against Freddy Gonzalez's crew. Third inning, bases loaded, walk to Listell, and a two run double by Freddie Freeman puts Atlanta in front. 3 1 and then an immediate response by the Mariners. Home run by Ackley and a three run shot by Morris. Three and one count. Kendris Morales. Mariners two for four this afternoon with runners in scoring position. And Morales will take his base on balls. That is the second walk issued by Tehran. A couple of men aboard here in the fifth inning for Kyle Seeger. A reminder that this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Roger, Roger McDowell, yeah. good reliever in his day. Heavy sinker Roger McDowell. 
pitching coach for the Braves having a conversation with his young right hander again Tehran just 23 years old an all star this year as you take a look at James Russell the lefty getting loose. Kyle Seeger due up Kyle picked up an RBI his first time up in the first inning able to drive Ackley home his 68th RBI on the year. A great opportunity here for Seeger picked up his 68th RBI. Team leader in that category Cano is second. 62. We've seen the ball well off of him two for two with an RBI and a run scored. All one. Here comes the one oh. Cold foul. Oh, he hit that hard. Two hit day for Kyle. Five for 23 on the road trip. Got a 1 1 pitch. Through the hole again, a 3 for 3 day. Bases are loaded. They hold Keno at third. Bases loaded. Nobody out here in the fifth inning. 3 for 3 day for Kyle Seeger. Three hits the right. He's found this hole on the right side and back to back at bats. Pitch away from him. They're trying to get him to hit into the double play, but he finds a hole on the right side of the infield. Mariners are now three for five with runners in scoring position. Tampa Bay leads Oakland four nothing. Rays have the bases loaded top of the fifth. Taylor can do some damage here. Blocked by Gaddis, ball one. This will probably be the last hitter for Tehran. We saw the left hander getting loose, and with Logan Morrison on deck, who's already hit a three run homer and had a 400 average against Tehran before the game started. I'm sure that's who he's getting loose for, the lefty. Big at bat for Chris Taylor. Base hit his last time up. AJ Upton in center, shading towards right center field. Big gap in left center. In tight. 2 0. Duo pitch, bases loaded, nobody out. Left field, Bonifacio is there, tagging his Kino, and he'll score easily. Bonifacio, not much of an arm, just got it back in the infield. Chris Taylor picks up an RBI, 6 3 Mariners. Third RBI for Taylor. And for Chris Taylor, that's his first big league sacrifice fly. We take a look at our Columbia Bank difference of the game and take you back to Lomo's at bat. Morrison in the third, Mike. Long home run. Drives in three. That was a big home run. The Mariners were down a run at the time, but he gives them a two run lead. Down stretch to three runs after that sack fly by Taylor. Lomo with a seven game hitting streak with that home run. And Gonzalez is going to leave his right hander out there. Put an exclamation point on this day. Nope. Brown ball double play opportunity. They turn two. Mariners do get one run out of this outing. In the fifth inning, the lead now six to three.
And down south of there, you've got the Mariners leading 6-3. to three. Chris Young, he's in line to get the win if the Mariners can hold on here. It'll be his five, tenth of the year. Yeah, five innings pitch for him, seven hits, three runs, all of them are just one walk. That was a key for him, six strikeouts. Eight strikeouts, a season high for him. 92 pitches, he threw 60 strikes. As Dave mentioned, in line for the win. He'll turn it over to the bullpen. Mom entertaining the two lads. Taking in some of the statuary. Fascinated by the fountains. We've seen that over the years. Joe Bible takes over. His 40th appearance on the air, and he has pitched well for the Mariners. A 1 3 4 ERA, 3 and 1 record for him. Opponents hitting just 225. Joe has been outstanding coming out of the bullpen. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think back to spring training and I was wondering how he was going to fit in with all the power arms that the Mariners have and what he was going to be capable of doing. Obviously, he had played in Pittsburgh when Lloyd was there and had some experience. But he has just been great for them out of the pen. He's done a good job pitching in these middle innings, holding teams right where they're at. Exactly. Missed the entire 2012 season. Veteran has been around, no panic. Everything under control. First pitch strike to Jason Hayward. Hayward one for two today. Big breaking ball. 0 and 2. Well, Helmson's up. I'm back after Tommy John surgery in 2012. Let's see how Lloyd wants to play it. Hayward, the one lefty, then you have three right handed hitters do up. Johnson, Gaddis, and Upton, BJ Upton all do up after him. That's why Tom is getting loose in the pen. Breaking ball served in the center field. Jackson's got to play it on a hot base hit. Two hit day for Jason Hayward. And Lloyd out of the dugout. He's going to mix and match the rest of the way. Well, we mentioned that the bullpen in great shape, so he's going to use it this afternoon. And he's on his way out to get Tom Wilhelmson. So the parade of bullpen guys begins here. And as we get a break, we can tell you that Tampa Bay leads at Oakland 7 0. Bottom of the fifth inning. Mariners lead here 6 3. Top of the sixth. Week. The Atlanta Braves. Don't you love the wacky race for the wild card 
Wild cards in the American League. Look at that. The Angels and Blue Jays have the top two positions after that. Kansas City, the Yankees, the Mariners, Indians, and the White Sox still not out of it. White Sox come to town for four big games. And here's a look. Century Link linked to what's next. Pitching matchups. Carroll against Elias Quintana. Boy, he was tough. And we saw him in Chicago. Iwakuma. No, Wesley was a winner against the Mariners. James Paxton, glad to have him back. John Danks. Got pretty good career numbers against the Mariners, and Lloyd has yet to make a decision on his Sunday starter. Tom Wilhelmson will take over a 2 2 5 ERA, 51 strikeouts in the 60 innings he has worked opponents, hitting just 170. Break one to Chris Johnson. You mentioned John Danks, who took the loss in last night's 16 0. Uh, defeat at the hands of Texas. He went nine earned runs in four and two thirds. Maybe the Mariners starting to catch a few breaks. We talked about last night with the Braves making a couple of errors to help him out, and then Chris Sale have a four-game series, and you're going to miss Chris Sale. Well, that's a break. He is pitching today against the Rangers. So the Mariners miss Sale. Once was enough back in uh, Chicago. Agreed. That was just phenomenal what he did. <laughs> Dominant performance. Jacks is a 3 1 victory over the Sox today. Two one pitch coming to Chris Johnson. 0 for 2 today. I get fooled on that one. 2 2. Good fastball, 96 miles an hour, well in off the plate. I think it surprised him. Tom has the good fastball. He can be 95 to 98 miles an hour. Also mix in a cutter, which is what he started him off with at 93. Of course, the big curveball, 12-6 curveball, and a change up to the left-handers. 2-2 two -two pitch. Good miss by much. You hear the crowd ooing and eyeing. Another good crowd on hand. 24,496 last evening. Upwards of 30,000 here today on this breezy Wednesday. Payoff pitch here to Johnson. And fool him again. One out here in the sixth. There's affordable family fun at every BECU family night this season. Pick up select view level tickets for only 10 bucks. The next event is Monday when King Felix and the Mariners take on the Blue Jays. Grab seats for your family. Better get them now. Mariners.com. We're talking about Chris Sale. Took the loss today. Six innings, a three hit, two run ball. k nine and gave up a home run as uh, Texas wins three to one. Well, the other part about. Chicago, they have struggled to score runs lately, just nine runs over their last four games. So, Mariners pitching staff, stay away from that Abreu guy, and he should be in pretty good shape. How about that guy? He's having just a great year. He went 0 for 3 today, but he's hitting 304. Look at Evan Gaddis, dangerous hitter, 1 for 2, single in the third, single to left. Good breaking ball today. And a hard slider for the right handers. Hey, look at the last swing. Again, they're getting ready for the 96 mile an hour fastball, and you have to make a decision as a hitter. Tough to lay off of that pitch when he throws it in that location. It looks like it's going to be above the knees on the outside corner, and it just disappears on you. What a curve. Frozen. And no complaint by Gaddis. That was a dandy pitch by Tom Wilhelmson. We'll take a look at it. 12-6 curveball, one of the best ones in the American League. And you see a lot of that when he throws that pitch. Hitters just cannot pull the trigger on it. Buckles his knees and it's over with. Here in change ago. When Tom had it rolling. Boy, that pitch. He threw that with regularity to good results. Here's a guy you would think would be made to order for him. DJ e. Upton who strikes out a lot. He got a ground rule double bounce on over the fence in left center field last time up. 140 strikeouts, most in the major leagues.
Two and one. That's just a good fastball, top of the strike zone. It's a nice luxury to have, ball behind two and zero, oh, and then just challenge him. Able to throw it by him. Three and one. From Big Top. And he loses up to. Hmm. Brings a tying run to the plate, Romero Pena. Pena one for two with a run scored. Field tilted a little bit towards left and not deep. High chopper to Cano. And thank you for sliding head first. No runs. One hit, no errors, two left. 6 3 Mariners. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. Look at this day in Seattle, huh? You folks around the country, huh? Huh? Look at that. Six to three. Mariners lead. Here's the fan of Larry Wayne Chipper Jones. He'll be headed to the Hall of Fame in a few years. How about that slide in the first? Robinson Cano. Is he right now the thank you card right now? Well, when you and I always talk about it, I, sometimes you can't help yourself, but it's always a bad play. The only the only time is if you can see the first baseman off the bag and you're trying to avoid a tag. Other than that, you should always run through it. And maybe that was the difference on the play of him not beating it out. Good play by Cano on the chopper. Able to get rid of it quickly. There's that step. Yeah, he's gonna beat it. Thank you. It's Coach Mike Blowers, everybody. His DVDs are available at 1 800 Don't Slide. <laughs> Holy Tony. <laughs> oh, the, the, the chance of injury, and I don't think you get there any faster. 
And Superman is a cartoon. <laughs> in good shape he runs pretty well right and again I appreciate the hustle and the desire but just not a real good play Mariners benefit well, it does look like he went to work to it is dirty isn't it now yeah. that's the reason why my 15 year old son does it that kid to work today, uh, and, and you could just <laughs> lean on him right on TV right now. <laughs> We've had our discussions. We've had our discussions about I, it. I'm sure you have. Yeah. You get you get the blood pressure up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows better now. Glad you both can smile about it. <laughs> Look, that is wow. on. Good play. Oh, now he's saying it hit the ground. Gaddis thought he caught it cleanly, but it hits the ground. Good sell job by Gaddis. Let's take a look at it. Yep. He sold it well, though. Nice job by Lance Barrett. It's not his third rodeo either. Oh, this might work. Stay fair. Man, we've seen a couple here. We, we were in Baltimore, saw some Baltimore chops. It's amazing. And if you go back and read about John McGraw, John J. McGraw, that was a big part of my offense back in those days. We bottle bat it, chop down on it, bounce it off the plate. You're in, you got a bag. Good first base with the a base hit. The boy. Oh, my goodness. India, one for two day for him. Will be the eighth pitch of the at bat. 92 pitches now for Tehran. I thought he was going to be done last inning, but Gonzalez staying with him. 36 year old against the 23 year old here. James yeah. Russell, he's ready. He's been up a couple of times in the pen. Again, he pitched last night. Pounds it down to painting. One away. Hey fans, follow every Mariners game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replays, score stats, audio-free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Mariners.com today. This is Sucre for two, pop to short and strikeout. Great seats all around and looking forward to getting that final attendance tally. I think it's going to be a good one. Don't forget what, not to overlook the White Sox by any stretch of the imagination. But with Toronto coming to town next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're always a good draw here in Seattle. And given what's at stake, probably be even more Blue Jay fans down here. So you don't want, if you're a Mariner faithful, you don't want to be shouted down by the Blue Jay fans. Get your tickets to that three game series. And coming up on the road, three games at Detroit. Very well could see. If you're a fan of good pitching, oh baby, that's the series you want to watch with the Mariners pitching staff and then what the Tigers are doing. You can see three Cy Young Award winners going after the Mariners. Now we're taken care of by Tehran. Yeah, with their pitching and the Mariner pitching, you'd be looking at anybody. It'll be an accomplishment to score three, four more runs in, in a game. And at the start of that series against Toronto, Felix will be going Monday, and it was great to see the Kings court. Extra sections last night. It was a lot of fun, a lot of electricity in the ballpark. So get out and fill that section up again. That was fun. Lloyd said you could feel it in the, in the, uh, the dugout. The guys really responded to it. He said, and not just Felix's fans. He said the fans in general talking about last night, 20, almost 25,000. And here comes the attendance right now. Not to mention every time Felix goes out there now, another opportunity to extend his record. 
30,770 on hand here at Safeco Field. He stayed over from last night. Well, think? night day, why not? Very interesting to watch Austin Jackson going back to Detroit playing against his old team. He may be here till Monday. <laughs> Up and in. Watch out. Durant struck out five. He's walked two. Giving up two home runs. They both came in the third inning. Lead off homer by Ackley and a three run blast by Morris. Freddy Gonzalez is club in jeopardy of losing its eighth consecutive ball game. Ground ball Pena. Nice friendly hop. And a one, two, three, sixth. Seventh inning coming up at Sunny Safe Go Field in Seattle, a six three Mariner League. Against the Atlanta Braves, Lou Pinella, he's going to become the eighth member of the Mariners Hall of Fame during a special pregame ceremony on Saturday. Text Lou, L O U, to 71532 to win two tickets in the commissioner's box for that night and your very own bobblehead of Sweet Lou. Not a bad deal. Get on it. For more information, visit Mariners.com. Text Lou, L O U, to 71532. Dominic Leone takes over. Fourth pitcher today. Another power arm out of the pen for the Mariners. 2.18 ERA, 49 strikeouts to 17 walks. Pulling sitting 231 against Dominic. Good fastball. He'll be 95 miles an hour with a hard slider. Bonifacio, Estella, and Freeman tap the order here in the seventh. Mariners scored first. First inning. RBI single Kyle Seeger. Top of the third. Bases loaded walk to Listella and Freddie Freeman. A two run double put Atlanta in a lead three to one. And then bottom of that inning, Mariners come right back. Actually, a leadoff homer and a three run homer by Morrison. And they add a run in the fifth. Sacrifice fly by Chris Taylor. Charlie Furbush getting loose in the pen. There's Charlie. Both left handers do up Listella and Freeman. Bonifacio, a switch hitter. Elio today, one for three runs scored. Seeger in on the grass, well in on the grass now at third, 2 0. First strike of the ball game, two and one. 
Chris Young in line to get the victory. It would be his 10th against six losses. Mariners can carry this through. Two and two. Chris went five innings, seven hits, three runs all earned, a walk, six strikeouts, 92 pitches, 60 for strikes. Taylor throws over to Morrison to retire Bonifacio for the first out here in the seventh inning. Mariners can already promise a clutch hit when they take on the White Sox Friday at 7:10. That's because it's EQC Girls Night Out, and when you purchase a specially priced ticket, you're going to pick up a Mariners fashionable clutch. This great accessory, a ticket to the game, and your first drink. They're available for as low as 25 bucks only at Mariners.com/girls. Tommy Lestella lined out the center's last at bat. Two strike. This is loaded walk in the third. This guy to center in the first. All in the strike. Braves leave here and they go home for a nice homestand. Left field, Ackley's tracking, long run, and he makes a play. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a snow cone. I'm not sure if it hit the heel and ran up his glove. Austin Jackson, pretty good laugh, but he's able to hang on to it. I didn't even see that right on the heel of the glove and the end of the webbing. Fortunate that he was able to get it back into the webbing before he hit the wall out in left field. Good play. Again, the sun, it's tough. These day games. And again, that's a glove that Jason Bay gave to him. And I remember talking to Ackley after he took that home run away in the Mets series. He said, once that ball goes in there, I got it. He's not kidding. <laughs> Jason Bay gave him that glove. It was already broken in. Here's Cano off the his glove and an infield base hit for Freddie Freeman. Three hit day for Freddie. Not sure he, when he went to go pick it up again. I'm not sure he had a real good grip on it because typically he will get more on the throw. Close play, but it looks like Freeman beat it out. So maybe a little bit of a change up across the diamond. Two outs, a middle board. Freddie, a three for four day. And Cano will have another opportunity on that. Both teams with nine hits. Six three Mariners. Trying to go eight and ten since the All Star break. While Freeman's enjoying a three for four day, a nightmare for Justin Upton. He's caved three times. The Braves who go home to play. Washington for three, the Dodgers for four, and Oakland for three. Barrett is still have to face the Phillies out of the NL East, last place. 11 games back starting today and I'll also see at the end of this month the first place team the Nationals were up three on Atlanta. We're going to see Miami and the Mets. I think if Leon ends up losing Upton here, if Charlie ready to go to face Hayward, the left handed hitter waiting on deck. Two and one. 
Good fastball in the outside corner, 95 miles an hour. It's Upton, strike away from the, the Golden Sombrero. Upton almost a Mariner a couple of years ago. There's and obtain him from Arizona pitch and there it is what size do you need four strikeouts of Justin Upton today Dominic Leon strands a runner we go to the home seven six three Mariners Washington's Lottery and the Department of Imagination. What would you do if you won? Good to have you with us as you look at how this day has materialized here at Safe Field. Mariners have a 6-3 lead. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew. Great crowd on hand. 30,770 as the Mariners trying to get Chris Young a win. The Mariners trying to stay on a winning track as they pursue a Playoff spot here in the American League. Well, Tay, Tay Ron, yeah, he hot pitcher coming into this one, but the Mariners did some damage to his ERA today. Six innings, nine hits, six runs, all of them earned. Two walks, five strikeouts, 101 pitches for him. He threw 68 strikes. He also gave up a couple of home runs. James Russell will take over his 48th appearance on the air. 3-2-5 ERA. Home's batting average, 2-11. One of those home runs off of Tehran. Dustin Ackley. What about his day? Two for three. Got an infield hit run scored in the first inning and the home run leading off the third. The seventh home run of the year. To a different club when he's hitting at the clip he's at right now. Full. Two and one. Ackley, Cano, and Morales here in the home seventh on this beautiful Wednesday. James Russell, inning of work. Last evening, gave up one hit. Counts are in full. Way in a miss. Ackley's gone. One away here in the seventh. Here's Angie Mente. 
Guys, the Mariners had a good day yesterday, but really it was a great day because most of the teams in front of them for that second wild card spot lost. The Toronto Blue Jays lost, the Yankees lost. As far as what's going on today, of course, we hope the uh, Mariners stay true in this holds up. We got uh, the Tigers and the Yankees, Verlander versus Captain Wano. Baltimore going up against Toronto. Hopefully they can knock them off again. Wei Ying Chen versus Drew Hutchinson. And uh, then Kansas City and Arizona, a little interleague matchup later today at 6-4. Guys? All right, Angie, here's Robinson Cano taking strike one. Rabi with a walk, a fly to center, and a double. To right field that was back in the fifth. Slider on the outside corner. You know, a 296 hitter against lefty pitching. 350 against right hand. Two or two. Got a base hit for Cano. Maybe a double. He's hard out of the box. He's going all the way. Here's the throw by Hayward offline. A stand up hustle double. Robinson Cano. Two doubles today. 27 on the season. Team leader in that category. Pretty good pitch. Pitches down and away right on the outside corner. He stays with it. Hits it hard back up in the middle just to the right of the second baseman, La Stella. And they mentioned a hustle double. Key to it is you have to run hard out of the box, and he is. Hayward with a strong arm in right field, but he tests him. Throw offline. Back to back doubles for Cano. One of the seventh double for Robbie brings up Morales over two with a walk. He's due for a good AB here. Still trying to get back to the form he showed last year. With the Mariners in home runs and RBIs. Well, no, over two hitting left handed, maybe turning around and hitting from the right side will help. Mariners three for six with runners in scoring position this afternoon. Going two. Here's the O two. Family's Day, Braves family. Got a souvenir baseball, 0 and 2 here. Get the other way, base hit. Cano coming around third. Hayward to throw way offline. Cut off by Freeman. There you go, Morales with an RBI single. 7 3 Mariners. Morales is 24th run batted in. Well, you never know. Maybe we talked about it with switch hitters. Sometimes it just feel better from one side of the plate to the other. And for Morales, 0 for 2, hitting left-handed. Here's a base hit, hitting right-handed. And a look at Cano out at second base. Good secondary lead. He runs hard right away, and they're going to send him.
seven runs on 11 hits for the Mariners. Seeger looking at a strike. Charlie Farbrook's getting loose again in the Mariners' pen. Most runs the Mariners have scored since they put up 13 back on July 1 at Houston, a 13 2 runaway. Bonifacio on the case. Two outs. Mariners scored six runs at Baltimore, six runs at Cleveland on the recently completed road trip. And six against Oakland here back on the 12th of July. 13 against Houston. Pitching change. Freddie Gonzalez coming out. Two outs, a run in, and a runner on. And we'll take this time out. Come back right after this. Mariners lead 7-3. Power this afternoon, a 7 3 lead, bottom of the seventh inning. Glad to have you with us here in Root Sports at Safe Go Field in Seattle. Dave Sims along with Mike Flowers and the Root Sports crew. Anthony Vavaro takes over the Mount of Mariner back in 2010 in four games. 3 and 3 record, a 2.91 ERA, 43 strikeouts to 10 walks. He will get Chris Taylor. Chris having a good afternoon. He is one for two. Scored a run and picked up an RBI. Lloyd McClendon moving him up to the sixth spot at the start of today's game. He had been hitting ninth. Twenty-two. Vivaro in 2010 with the Mariners 0-1 on an ERA of 11.25 in four games. Pitched four innings. Six hits, gave up five runs all earned. Oh and two. Here's ball one. One out double by Cano. Morales followed with an RBI single. Make it 7-3 here in the seventh. Two and two. Taylor, huge gap in left center. 2 2 pitch. He's worked it to a full count after being behind early. Morgan Morrison on deck. Wow, 
Cross takes off. Pitts fouled off. RBIs today, Ackley has got one, Morales one, Seeger one, Taylor one, and three for Morris. Three two to Taylor. Walked it. Two men aboard here for the Mariners. Was ahead 0 and 2, and then Taylor wins that battle. Root Sports looking for the ultimate Northwest Mariner fan in the state of Idaho throughout the month of August. Send us your photo and story using hashtag ultimate NW fan ID or by email at ultimate fan at rootsports.com, and you can win a VIP trip for two to Seattle. That's coming up in the month of September. Personalized jersey and more for official rules. Visit rootsports.com. Logan Morrison two aboard. He homered in the third inning with a couple of men on. Off the end of the bat. Throwing over is Johnson to retire him. Mariners get a run on two hits. No errors. Leave two. 7-3 lead. Charlie Furbush will take over. Uh, are more than doubling up the Braves 7-3. Hi everyone, Angie Mentink here. Right now it is time for our AT&T fan photo of the game. And I am impressed with Steven uh, because he apparently got all the way to the top of Mount St. Helens. He says that he is staying true to the blue right on the ridge there. Remember to tweet your photos to hashtag Mariners fan photo for a chance to have it shown in upcoming broadcasts. And guys, I'm not going to lie. I did not know that you could get that close to uh, the, the, the crater there at Mount St. Helens. Who good. knew? I didn't. Good stuff. I like it. There you go. That is outstanding. Mike will be up there one day. He's a little too close to the edge there for me. <laughs> no, thank you. Charlie Furbush will take over. Charlie ERA just over four, 33 strikeouts in the 31 and the third innings that he has pitched. Home is hitting 264. Five, six, and seven coming up for Atlanta. Jason Hayward will lead it off. Two for three day for him. Medina getting loose in the pen. You have Hayward, the lefty, and then three right handed hitters after that. will play it straight up on the infield and the outfield. Hayward with two hits today, nine for his last 16 four game hitting streak. There's 
Here's a look at Medina. Braves got their runs. Three of them in the third. Stella bases loaded walk and a two run double by Freddie Freeman. All two strikes. For Charlie, his fastball will be in the low 90s. He also throws a slider in the low 80s. Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson, the third baseman, struck out looking, fouled out to Morrison, and struck out swinging. Wilhelmson got him, made him look bad, leading off uh, with a uh, man aboard in the sixth inning. Well, with a four run lead and one out, nobody on. Lloyd McClendon is going to stay with his left hander. Does he play for Seager? Got two outs. Two way here in the eighth. Gets the season debut of Seahawks. All access tonight at 10:30. Get exclusive player interviews and Seahawks stories you can't find anywhere else. If you do miss tonight's episode, tune in for re-airs throughout the week on Root Sports. For your local programming schedule, visit RootSports.com. To bring up Gaddis. Gaddis is one for three at a base hit in the third inning and scored a run. Having a good year. 277 with 17 home runs on the year. Ball one, Evan. Sox are coming to town. Blue Jays coming to town. Get your tickets. It's this home stand a nine gamer unfolds here in Seattle. What a one to get us. Oh, two strikes. Big man out of Dallas, 6'4, 240. Different looking batting style, but it works for him. Slaps this one in the right field for a base hit. Maybe Chavez gets it back. Two hit day for Evan. And that will bring out Lloyd McClendon. Looks like he's going to get Medina. Charlie gets a couple of ground outs, gives up a base hit. Your Avis Medina will take over. Looking to get the final out of the eighth inning. We'll be right back. Mariners lead at 7 3.
the horizon. Uh, tomorrow and Friday, a couple of night games. Chris Young uh, going today. Then it's Rowan Elias, Sashi Iwakuma the, over the next two games. And then Saturday, our coverage for Lou Pinella night gets going at 4.30. First pitch a couple of hours later. Sunday, uh, day game here early. We have all three night games against the Toronto Blue Jays, but then against the Tigers. Got to focus. We get into the Eastern time zone. The kids can pay attention and watch this one. Uh, a couple of uh, 3.30 stars for our coverage. And then up early on the 17th, 9.30 a.m., we get everything uh, going. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Andy. There's a look at what's coming up, and here's Medina to take over in the eighth inning with the man aboard and two outs. He has really pitched well for the Mariners this year. 2-3-9 ERA, 36 strikeouts and 37 and two-thirds. Opponents hitting just 194 against him. For Medina, good fastball. He'll be in the mid-90s and a hard slider. Then we get B.J. Upton. Upton one for two. He had a double back in the fourth inning. He's also had a strikeout and a walk. Gaddis at first. Braves, they've lost seven consecutive ball games. Ball one. DJ. There's Evan Gaddis, base hit the right with two outs here in the eighth. One on one to BJ Upton. Gloria, stay here in Seattle if you're just joining us. 67 degrees at first pitch, great crowd, 30,770. They've been entertained by Mariner offense today. A couple of home runs in the third inning. Actually, a leadoff blast and a three run homer by Logan Morrison later on in that frame. So Medina's ahead one and two. A couple of good fastballs, 95 in the last one, 96 miles an hour. Two balls, two strikes. They want to get him out with the slider, but Medina has missed badly with the two sliders that he's thrown up to. Two, two pitch, two outs. They're not holding Gaddis at first. Strike three call. Put a bender in there. And BJ Upton took it for called. Strike three. He struck out twice today. His brothers came four times. Mariners, a 7 3 lead.
Mariners lead 7-3. That's a big part of it. But look at what's happening on Lake Washington. From the stance Harris picked. Good look at Mount Baker. In the background. Sailing, sailing. Great day for it. Home waters. White Sox are next in town after the Braves leave. Our century link link to what's next. Carroll against Elias. We've got Quintana against Iwakuma. Hector Nuesi faces old teammates. James Paxton will be his opponent. And John Danks against a starter still to be named. Really looking forward to seeing Paxton in his second outing since coming back from the disabled list. Jaime will take over a 284 ERA. Only six and a third for him. Ten strikeouts though. Opponents hitting 182. Chavez leads off, takes a strike. Envy, Jesus Sucre, and Austin Jackson, 8 9 and 1 here. The Mariners home eighth. Slashing away, Indy's behind 0 and 2. I may re just recall from Triple A Gwinnett the second time this season. It's back in July 29th. Converted 16 of 17 save opportunities down there. Two strikes. And ended. Fouls it into the glove of Evan Gaddis went away. One down here in the eighth brings up into the soup craze over three. Kyle Seeger got the Mariners going in the first inning. Ackley a solo home run. Morrison a three run homer in the third. Sack fly in the fifth by Taylor. And Kendris Morales with the seventh inning RBI scoring. Robinson Cano had a one out double. Robbie's doubled twice today and scored twice. Two hit day for Ackley, an infield hit and a homer. Three hit day for Seeger. Three singles to right. He's driven in a run. He is throwing hard. 97 miles an hour on the fastball. He also has a hard slider. Pitch. Slow curveball after 97, a 75 mile an hour curveball. Sucre way out in front of that slow curve, trying to catch up to 97. Good pitch. Juan Jose Jaime, 6'2, 250 out of San Cristobal in the Dominican Republic. Austin Jackson for four. Second Mariner hit here at Safeco Field. Able to fight off a pretty good fastball, 95 miles an hour, in on his hands. Inside out swing, jams him a little bit, but that's a base hit. Another opportunity for Ackley. One 
going to Destin. Seven runs for the Mariners, the most since July 1st when they went or 13 at Houston. 13 2 victory for Sashi Iwakuma. So I had six, six two victory against Oakland on July 12 here. Last road trip, six five win at Cleveland, six three win at Baltimore. Estella with the backhand throws out Ackley, and to the ninth we go. Mariners three outs away from making Chris Young a 10 game winner. Seven three lead for the Mariners against the Atlanta Braves out of the National League East. Wild card standings. There you go. Pursuit of the Angels and the Blue Jays. Mariners will see plenty of the Angels coming down in the last month. Kansas City. Right behind Toronto. Mariners and the Yankees. One back. Cleveland and the White Sox coming to town. Still not out of it yet. Yeah, Medina will stay on. Rodney just starting to play catch out in the bullpen. Not a save situation, so Rodney probably won't get in the game unless base runner gets out there. But Medina's throwing the ball well. Nine, one, and two for the Braves. Pena, Bonifacio, and La Stella. at those standings in the wild card and the extra wild card is obviously already a success. I'm sure the people in Seattle think so. Aaron's playing some meaningful baseball in August. It's good to see. Yay! <laughs> and nice to see a big inning mean something more than one like that third inning. Actually Got plenty of room. One out. Top of the order to Emilio Bonifacio. One for 
four day with the run scored. Ball one to Bonifacio with Seeger in at third. Ackley with a leadoff homer in the third later on, same inning, three run shot. Logan Morris gave the Mariners a 5 3 lead. They've added on a couple of runs since then. One to Bonifacio. Opportunity for Ackley. Two outs. Well, here we go. Now to the final out. Tommy LaStella. Full pin. Another fine job here by the Mariners by Mo Wilhelmson. Leon Furbush and Medina. In relief of Chris Young, who went five innings, seven hits, three runs, all earned, a walk, and six strikeouts. Crowd on its feet, 30,770. They've enjoyed this afternoon in the sun. And Ackley, he's got a chance to make all three outs. He's going to get it done. Chris Young, everybody, is a 10-game winner for the Mariners as they win today, 7-3. to three. First time Chris Young's won 10 games since 06. Ackley a home run, Morrison a home run. Good defense again. The bullpen stellar. What a start to this nine game homestand. Started with Felix last night and then Young tonight. As Dave mentioned, a 10 game winner. Four shutout innings by the bullpen again. A well rested bullpen. It's good to see the Mariners with some power today. A couple of home runs in this one and scoring seven runs, 12 hits, seven runs for the Mariners. What a boost Chris Young has been to this pitching staff. He goes to 10 and 6. Tehran the loser. He's 10. And a what a fine afternoon and it continues right now with the post game show Brad and Bill fellas. All right gentlemen thank you yeah the pen enjoying it out here like the guy.